Quick links for Odyssey and BitChute. One of the problems the left has is that with the soft bigotry or lowered expectations is they keep having to tie themselves in cognitive knots, uh, to avoid the landmines that are strewn throughout this field that they've planted themselves because they have to, they don't think that they can hold people accountable to the same rules, different rules for different people. So they have to, they have to, because they ultimately don't have uh, faith in the people that they're using as their shields and their purse puppies. So they have to keep creating more Machiavellian rules to twist and turn to say, oh, well, the reason my purse puppies are not behaving the way I wanted them to behave is really your fault. And there were normies and people on the right goes, well, you just make rules for everybody, and everybody follows the same rules. You figure out a societal standard and say, okay, we're going to enforce this through civil or criminal or through otherwise uh, acts of legislation. And the left says, oh, but our purse puppies won't follow those rules, so we have to create exceptions to the rules. And it's like, well, unfortunately, you come up across uh, against the equal protection which uh, is kind of a sand in their gears. So they, they keep coming up with more and more rules to change things around so that they can make excuses for people as opposed to just saying, yeah, we all need to get on the same page here. Where ultimately you've come so full circle horseshoe that you're saying that the things that you think build up civilization that most people would consider to be good things things that get things done those are somehow now bad things because your purse puppies won't either abide by those rules and accomplish those things things like being on time so I thought this was a joke when I first heard this because I heard of something similar to this like a couple weeks ago I couldn't I couldn't believe they would be this forthcoming with something so asinine on the face of it. This is the the cognitive dissonance where you hold two thoughts in your head that are uh, conflicting with each other but you try to believe them both and you just you can't you're never going to get there. So Virginia teacher deletes video asserts you know the thing is they they set out to prove a point and through their convoluted thinking, they actually prove their opponent's point. Literally, the, the Louis Farrakhan's, the David Dukes, they're like Sig Haling, Hugo Boss, 1469, with the rest of them. You go, wait, aren't you on the left? Didn't you start off to prove something else? Yeah, but they have no core dogma. They have no belief system whatsoever. Because they're fighting what they, they're fighting mostly a straw man. So they have to keep recreating new straw men to knock down and then rebuild. And then as their, as their uh, purse puppies continue to not do what they want them to do, they have to keep moving the goalposts and then launching more straw men. A Virginia high school teacher offers another reminder that the supposed anti-racists are the real racists. That term, it could have been, there's a theory it was invented about 100 years ago by a, a Bolshevik uh, Bernstein later changed his name to Trotsky, which is kind of weird if you're trying to conceal your identity by changing it to a name from the same area of the world. Uh, ye, are they anti-racist, the real racists? The word is, is a control term. It's a manipulative power word. It's part of propaganda. What does it mean? It means that you think your tribe's the best tribe? That's human nature. You really don't really come up with a word for human nature like that, to think, yes, our tribe is better than other tribes. We're South Koreans, you're Chinese, we're better. We're Japanese, you're Russian, we're better. You're German, Irish, Polish, um, Swedish. Everyone thinks that their way of life is the best. That's the way of the world. Is the left, are the left real racists? It's a meaningless term. Josh, an English teacher, was forced to delete a TikTok video of the cancer that is TikTok after the action was claimed that making children behave in class is evidence of European supremacy. Oh, <clears throat> what webs they weave, right? So there's an educational thing where there, it's a, you know, one of those get under your desk if there's an atomic bomb. If you're a child of the 80s, you remember that. Uh, purportedly, it's to 
keep you from you know the glass blowing out and cutting you to shreds but like really if you're in a major city um i just like run up and run up on the ceiling or the the roof and just face the nukes really if you if you're a kid in the 80s you actually thought that you were going to die from atomic hellfire people talk about ptsd from like uh uh 911 like, try try being around in the 80s we literally thought we were going to die from plutonium so uh, an example of this uh, skit instructional videotapes is what i'm trying to talk about uh teaching respect features a skit involving a kid who's going to write a joke and the punchline is um he uses the skit to say it's evidence of european supremacy with a hug doing good things making sure that you're following directions and make sure you're sitting quietly and that you're in your seat and all these things that come from european culture well the, the japanese and the south koreans have no problem with that so it's not it's not really it's not really european culture is it is it south korean culture japanese culture even chinese culture southeast asian southeast asians i think have some of the highest iq scores on earth so it's really not it's really not european culture if europeans are not the um pinnacle of it are they um europeans aren't even the wealthiest people in america actually so i'm not i'm not quite sure why you built up this straw man it's like they seem to ignore asians the true <laughs> true master race because they don't know how to treat asians they don't know what to do with them they can't use them in fact the asians hurt their arguments so they try to ignore them there's no white supremacy in America. There's Jewish, there's Asian, there's Indian supremacy, if, at least if you're looking at positions of power and financials. Um, if you're looking at athleticism, uh, it would probably be African supremacy. So this is nonsense. Like, this is easily, easily batted down, but no one ever raises a hand and bats it down because it's not politically correct to do so. Making sure that you're following directions and making sure that you're sitting quietly and you're in your seat and all these things. So basically, this doesn't come from European culture. This comes from, you're basically saying Eurasian culture, like the entire Europe, Central, and Far East Asia. That's Asian, Eurasian culture. And it, by population numbers, it's mostly Asian culture. I mean, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Are they doing things differently in Japan, China, Korea? I was just sitting quiet and being told stuff and taking things in in a passive stance. Another thing that's in many cultures, I, I don't know, it's been in the Mediterranean for 4,000 years. Um, how long have the Indians, I mean, in India, been teaching according to their whatever version of the Socratic method or classrooms? Um, pretty successfully. Uh, Pre-Islamic cultures had a pretty good academia. Um, so yeah, it's been a thing of advanced cultures. I mean, advanced is kind of a relative term but you know what i'm saying in fact all the world that has attained some semblance of civilization i mean being advanced relative to the world as a whole that's been part of their culture which is roughly you could call it eurasian culture so if we're positively enforcing these behaviors we are by extension enforcing elements of eurasian culture which therefore keeps eurasia at the center which is the definition of eurasian supremacy do they hear themselves when they say these kind of things like what are you saying you're saying because eurasians hit civilization faster than africans and uh i guess the new world which is the new world is also um eurasians but they uh it seemed like they were so busy traveling that they never, they didn't have the time. They were like, I don't know, 50,000 years behind uh, the core of Europe and Asia. So they didn't advance as fast because they were forming new civilizations. So like they might have been 50,000, 100,000 years behind a group of people in Eurasia who stayed where they were. Or, I mean, the people who left and you get, get what I'm saying. Um, so, so really you're saying like the New World Eurasians and Africans are not the same as the Eurasians who stayed in Eurasia to build civilization. Nobody like ever challenges these people because they're in this echo chamber safe space where anytime you challenge somebody, uh, they just call you a istifo. It's like, okay, well, let's let's either um, concede that or uh, not ar offer an argument against it because it, I don't think it's probative and relative to the heart of the argument. It feels more like a, not exactly an ad hominem, but it feels like an attack that's not attacking the the core of the argument. So let's just 
let's just move past that point and get to the core of the argument. Like, you can assume for the sake of ar the argument that um, is true or is it's false, but I don't think it, it matters either way to the core of the argument. Like, 2 plus 2 equals 4, whether or not someone is under a bridge shooting heroin when they, they state it. So we're positively enforcing these things. Well, isn't that what you want to build a civilization? To build... A, to Listen... What's the goal of civilization? What's the goal of man? What's the goal of life? I don't know. I'm not some stone teenager. I, I, I guess I'd loosely say to reach the stars, to establish civilizations on other planets, to take man off the planet, to, to spread out, spread that seed across the galaxy. I know we're not going to do it if we continue along this path. Uh, you know, no offense to uh, that religion, that Abrahamic religion, um, they, uh, they didn't accomplish a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of PhDs coming out of the... PhDs in physics coming out of the, uh, that area of the world. Because uh, they're not valuing that kind of stuff. They're valuing the afterlife. And um, communism? Well, communism, every time you try it, it implodes. So there's this, this thing that works, and that's roughly European civilization. The European standard of a... Either fascism or a liberal democracy, whatever you want to call it. Whatever... Um, shade of civilization you want, but it's like one side is reaching for the stars and the other side is is not. And I know this this stuff is is not. This stuff just results in gulags and it results in wasted time, wasted effort. You got people who these aren't dumb people necessarily. They're blinded by ideology where they have to believe in this thing because they've been brainwashed their whole lives. Like, this is a waste of a lot of people's brain power. A lot of resources is going into SGWism and then fighting SGWism and then shows and media that's tied up in it. It's like, this is a lot of wasted energy when we should be, I mean, as a planet doing something else. Like, this is, it's like, it's like there's a self limiting, um, uh, reaction in humanity to not reach it, and there's that's that's like a lot of science fiction has has talked about that. Like when uh, when uh, civilizations get beyond a certain stage, there's like a, either they they destroy themselves or they leave the planet and colonize the galaxy. And it's like we're never gonna get off this freaking planet and do anything that actually matters if we continue along this path. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys all next episode.